right friends welcome back to news analysis and features this is 31st week this is from 27th july to 2nd august and we are going to discuss two important events that is uh, foreign ownership of islands allowed by maldives why india is worried we are going to discuss in detail second one is interest subvention for agriculture crop loans is it serving the intended purpose so these two aspects we are going to discuss in detail this week look at the first issue this is the foreign ownership of islands allowed by maldives before going into the detailed aspect of this subject uh, let us uh, look at the country maldives please look into the map and maldives is uh, situated uh, somewhat uh, south of india or you can say slightly southwest of india and uh, this is uh, composed of uh, several uh, coral islands you may ask what is the coral coral is the marine creature or you can say marine invertebrate and it secretes the calcium carbonate because of which uh, this coral reefs are formed please look into these pictures this is the coral reef and these are beautiful to see and this is because of the solidification of calcium carbonate and these coral reefs are beautiful and at the same time this country this tiny country has got 1192 coral islands this small country in the indian ocean has got 1192 coral islands and there are total 26 atolls you may ask what is atolls these coral reefs are situated in such a way shallow body of water is separated by large body of water these are called atolls these coral reefs are situated in such a way that a shallow body of water is separated from large body of water inside the ocean so that's why these are called atolls so the total islands are grouped into 26 atolls chain of 26 atolls consisting of 1192 coral islands and please look into this picture it's very clear these are the coral islands situated in a fashion that the shallow body of water is separated from large body of water please look into this picture right so this is about the maldives so look into the other physical or geographical features so this country is located in indian ocean then mali is the capital and religion is islam known for luxury tourism several tourist resorts are there it has got its independence in the year 1965 area is 298 square kilometers very less and the population is just around 4 lakhs Maldivian rupiah is the currency and look at the decision taken by the Maldivian government recently Maldivian president is Abdullah Amin recently government took a decision that it will allow foreign ownership of land that means foreigners can own the land and two conditions are stipulated first and the foremost condition is they have to invest 1 billion dollars 1 billion dollars is minimum investment second precondition is they have to reclaim 70% of the land from sea we have just now discussed the area of the country is less than 300 square kilometers and just like singapore they want to reclaim land because of which they put two conditions 1 billion dollar investment as well as 70% of the land is to be reclaimed and because of these two conditions india feels that these two conditions may favor china because china's economic might is well known because of its manufacturing sector it is the manufacturing leader in the world second important aspect is it recently reclaimed controversial spratly islands in south china sea because of its reclamation in south china sea that spratly islands in spite of the dispute or territorial dispute with other countries it is a well known and in view of this india feels that it will naturally benefit china and 
before going into the relations of uh, Maldives with India and China, let us look at some important aspects or important overtures made by China in recent past. Issue number one, China has been issuing stapled visas to people from Arunachal Pradesh when they visit China. When the people of Arunachal Pradesh are visiting China, China is issuing stapled visas. When we are visiting any other country, normally they will stamp on our passport. But China is not stamping on the passport when the visitors are from Arunachal Pradesh. That is called a stapled visas. Visa is stapled with the passport, then when they are leaving the country, it is taken out. What it signifies? It signifies they are not recognizing the sovereignty of India over Arunachal Pradesh. China is not recognizing the sovereignty of India over Arunachal Pradesh. Because of that reason, they are not issuing or they are not stamping the passports when the people from Arunachal Pradesh visiting China. That means they feel that Arunachal Pradesh is a disputed area and it belongs to them. This is the first and the foremost thing of straining of relations between India and China. Look into the second one. China agreed to construct the Gwadar Kashgar Economic Corridor in Pakistan. Recently, when the Chinese Premier visited Pakistan, $46 billion were committed to have economic corridor as part of Silk Road project connecting the Gwadar port with Kashgar in China and this passes through Pak occupied Kashmir. Please look into this picture. This economic corridor, Gwadar port to Kashgar, passes through Pak occupied Kashmir. India expressed its concern. Look into the third move. When Mahinda Rajpaksa was the president of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka allowed China to dock its submarines in the territorial waters of Sri Lanka. Mahinda Rajpaksa was the president till January 2015. When he was the president, he allowed Chinese submarines to dock in the waters of Sri Lanka. All of you are well aware, Sri Lanka is very close to India. Subsequently, when Maitri Pala Sirisena became the president, he reversed that decision. And now Maitri Pala Sirisena is trying to balance relations with India as well as China and the Previously, during the regime of Rajpaksa, Sri Lanka tilted towards China. And now also, port infrastructure is being developed by China in Sri Lanka. Look into the fourth issue. China is reclaiming Spratly Islands in South China Sea. There is a territorial dispute with the five countries. Taiwan. Then Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, there is a dispute of territorial waters with the five countries. Even after dispute, China developed Spratly Islands in South China Sea against the wishes of these five countries. Look into the next issue. China recently conducted huge military drills in South China Sea. Not only reclaiming Spratly's Islands, recently it conducted military drills in South China Sea and some countries expressed their concern and Philippines joined Japan and America for conducting joint exercises to counteract the exercises by China. That means Philippines is moving towards Japan and America to counteract the influence of China in South China Sea. Look into the next issue. China has territorial dispute with Japan in East China Sea with regard to Senkaku Islands. With regard to Senkaku Islands, the other name for these islands is Dayuyu Islands. Senkaku or Dayuyu Islands? These islands are claimed by both China and Japan. There is a territorial dispute in the East China Sea. Look into the next one. China recently started oil exploration in East China Sea and Japan objected to it. Recently, China started oil exploration in East China Sea and Japan expressed its concern that the underground reservoir of Japanese territory will be tapped because of that exploration. 
look into the last one eighth one china and russia are coming together and planning to hold joint naval exercises in sea of japan please look into this picture this is sea of japan they are going to have joint naval exercises and the crux of this matter is these eight points why i listed is china has got the several disputes with several countries second point is it is the planning to show its economic might not only economic might it is the planning to militarize various regions and let us look at the relations of maldives with india and china first and the foremost is 3 years ago an airport contract awarded to gmr group was cancelled by the maldivian government it is worth 511 million dollars it was cancelled by maldivian government second important aspect is recently maldivian former president mohammad nasheed was sentenced for 13 years and india expressed its concern these are two incidents during the past 3 years are evident of straining of relations between india and maldives look at china recently the airport construction was given to some chinese firm i have already told you the airport contract given to indian firm gmr group was cancelled and subsequently the airport contract was given to some chinese firm the second important aspect is maldives accepted chinese invitation to join the maritime silk road project because of these two things maldives became close to china than india under these circumstances the decision of the maldivian government assumed significance and india expressed its concern because of the reasons let us conclude economic might of china as well as, well as expertise in reclamation of land may naturally benefit china second important aspect is already maldives tilted towards china as evident from the examples i have given third thing is china may militarize the indian ocean region and these three things are worrying india a lot and there is a case in point in india's apprehensions of militarizing the indian ocean because of the decision taken by maldives government right friends so this is the first issue only time can say how the things will turn up in due course of time right friends look into the second issue interest subvention for agriculture crop loans is it serving the intended purpose or not what is meant by interest subvention all of you are well aware banks should not give loans at interest rates below base rate base rate is decided by the asset liability management committee of the banks and is uh, transparently advertised and below base rate normally no loan should be given except some exempted categories except some exempted categories no loan should be given by banks below base rate and sometimes in view of the socio economic condition of the country in view of the improving the socio economic condition or the well being of the nation sometimes a decision may be taken by the central government to give interest subsidy to the banks sometimes central government may give interest subsidy to the banks which is known as interest subvention this normally happens in case of either agriculture or export credit or loans to socio economically disadvantaged groups like scs sts or maybe for solar projects for such type of projects normally central government will give interest subsidy to the banks that is called interest subvention look at this case in the agriculture loans now farmers are getting crop loans crop loans means they are short term loans for raising the crops and normally to be paid in less than 1 year and these crop loans are being given by banks to farmers at a 7% interest rate normally the base rate in the banks at present 
around 9.7 to 10 percent. The base rate at present is around 9.7 to 10 percent. Normally, banks should not give below that. But agriculture loans are given at 7 percent. 3 lakh rupees per farmer is the maximum limit. 3 lakh rupees per farmer is the maximum limit. Here the point is, farmer is paying 7 percent interest. 2 percent interest is paid by central government to the banks. Farmer is paying 7 percent interest to bank and 2 percent interest is paid by central government to bank that is called interest subvention. This scheme was brought in the year 2006-7 and every year government is giving interest subvention ranging from 1.5 percent to 3 percent. And this year for 2015-16, the interest subvention given is 2 percent. So, 7 percent farmers will be paying to banks, 2 percent will be paid by central government to banks. And if farmers repay in time, if the time period is one year, if a farmer is paying back within time, another 3 percent subsidy will be given. If farmers are paying back within time, another 3 percent subsidy will be given. That means, farmers will be charged at just 4 percent interest. Farmers will be charged at just 4 percent interest and another 3 percent will be paid by central government to banks. So, 2 percent interest subvention and another 3 percent interest subvention if farmers pay in time. So, this is interest subsidy or you can say agriculture subsidy. This is in force for the past 7-8 years or since 2006-7. Right? This year, government is giving 2 percent interest subvention. And let us look at the issues. Why is it required? First and the foremost thing is, agrarian distress is more in the country. Several farmers are committing suicide. It is a well known fact. And government admitted the states like Maharashtra, Telangana, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, several farmers are resorting to suicides as per the statistics of government say. Agrarian distress is more in rural areas and this is due to rain fed agriculture. Predominant portion of our land is rain fed. No protected irrigation facility. Protected irrigation is available to the lands of approximately 40 percent only. Remaining 60 percent is dependent on rains. Second thing is vagaries of monsoon, sometimes flooding, sometimes drought conditions. Third is low yields. Our small holdings are leading to less yield. Our holdings are very small. Majority of our holdings are marginal farmers or small farmers. Because of it, the investment in agriculture is less. They may not be able to afford investment. That is why yields are also less. And because of these reasons, this interest subvention is very much required. Second important aspect is to bring the persons or farmers out of the clutches of money lenders. Third important aspect is to act as a organized institutional mechanism. Some organized institutional mechanism is required in agriculture and the last one is to act as a psychological advantage to the farmers because they will have a feeling or they will have a confidence that some organizational structure is available. So, these are the advantages or you can say why the interest subvention scheme is required. But how is it being misutilized? Let us look at here. Gold loans, pledging gold, if you take loans, sometimes it is classified as agriculture. If you go to the bank, if you pledge gold and if you take loan, sometimes it is classified under agriculture because banks are under pressure to give agriculture loans. That means, banks are under pressure to satisfy priority sector lending norms. Because 18 percent of the loans have to go to agriculture, it is going into the hands of rich farmers or rich persons. That is the first drawback. Pledging gold and taking loan 
is categorized under crop loan that is the biggest hurdle that means it may be going into the hands of wrong persons or for unintended persons second important aspect is diverted for some unintended purpose sometimes it may be diverted for some unintended purpose third is used for lending at high interest rates what will happen in rural areas people buy pledging gold and categorizing it as agriculture they will borrow loan at 7% please remember if they repay in time it will be 4% only so they will borrow at 4% and will give loans at 24% or 36% acting as money lenders this is another disadvantage and some people what they will do is they will take loan under agriculture category and they will deposit in the bank as fixed deposit because fixed deposit carry around 8% interest they will take loan at 4% and fixed deposit at 8% some people are resorting to this and some people are using for consumption expenditure taking loan and using for some other purpose the other important aspect is most of these loans or at least a substantial portion of these loans are garnered by rich farmers because of the clause pledging gold can be categorized as agriculture loans the last one is substantial loans are given in the semi urban areas close to urban areas technically they are rural areas but they are semi urban areas and the loans meant for agriculture may be used for some other purpose so these are the ways how these loans are being misutilized what needs to be done first and the foremost is address the actual distress in a comprehensive way there is agrarian distress so no dispute about that but look at it from a comprehensive perspective because interest subvention may not be the solution small land holdings and yields are less you have to look at it from macro level not by doing interest subvention second important aspect is invest heavily in r&d in agriculture to increase the crop yields the utmost need of the hour is to increase the crop yields and invest more in research and development in agriculture and the need of the hour is to have second green revolution and incidentally the prime minister recently stated that the second green revolution has to come from eastern part of the country third thing is develop mechanism to scrutinize the actual usage of crop loan whether it is specifically being utilized for the intended purpose banks have to strengthen their supervising mechanism and they have to keep a tab on taking loans by pledging gold next one is concentrate more on giving quality inputs or timely inputs like seeds or fertilizers so as to come out of the agrarian distress so they have to tackle central government and state governments have to tackle the problem in a comprehensive way and in my view point in the short run or as a short term strategy interest subvention scheme is to be continued with the checks and balances or the mechanism of supervision is to be improved but in the long term a comprehensive strategy to bring agriculture out of distress like the green revolution or improving the yields of the farmers and giving timely inputs governments have to concentrate on these things that is the need of the hour and the final conclusion is in the short run please continue the interest subvention scheme but in the long run look at the comprehensive solution to the agrarian distress in the country right friends with this let us conclude this lecture please do join for questions and answers general as well as banking and have a nice day thank you